Today we're talking about reversing insulin resistance, specifically seven things that you can do to help reverse insulin resistance if this is something that you are affected by. Now, a few weeks ago, I made a post where I had a YouTube video and I also did a post on uh, TikTok about the five signs of insulin resistance. And it caused a lot of people to freak out and feel bad. And, you know, because many people are saying, oh my goodness, like I have all five, I have four of the five is this reversible what can i do and so on and so forth and so i never want people to feel hopeless or anything there's usually lots that we can do to improve if not reverse situations altogether so that's why i am coming back with this video to give you hope and to share with you seven things that you can do starting today to turn the needle of insulin resistance in the right direction and hopefully get it reversed all together, okay? So if you didn't see that video about the signs of insulin resistance, I'll tag it in the bottom of this uh, video um, and um, you can go and look at that. So let's go right into the seven things that you can do to help reverse insulin resistance. Now, the more things you do, like the more you do that would help, the better it is for you, right? Maybe the quicker the improvements in your situation. And of course, all these things, you want to sort of keep up with them. You wanna uh, consistently do these things so that you can have sustained reversal of insulin resistance. Just as a mild recap, a quick recap as well, insulin resistance is a condition where insulin does not work well in your no longer works well in your body and so to try to get it to work the body produces more and more insulin and so you end up with these high concentrations of insulin in the blood because it's working so hard to overcome the resistance and it's these high concentrations persistently high concentrations of insulin that cause the manifestations of insulin resistance which you can click the video and see what some of those signs are right all right let's go straight to what you can do one thing well essentially what you do the things that you do to reverse insulin resistance are things that are going to help keep your blood sugar levels down so all of these seven things are going to help with reducing and maintaining normal blood sugar levels the first one is to eat more fiber more fiber in your foods particularly fiber like natural not like a supplement right because a supplement is just going to give you one form of fiber but you want both soluble and insoluble fiber and so to get that you need it from the food like you know plant-based foods naturally occurring foods vegetables of course seeds nuts and all those things when you have more fiber in your diet what fiber does is that it slows the absorption of any sugar glucose right we can we'll use those words interchangeably it slows down the absorption of sugar from your intestines into the bloodstream so you don't have this big flood of sugar going to your liver overwhelming your liver and because it's just such a big concentration then you're going to have that trigger of insulin to get it stored away quickly because it never the body never wants to keep high blood sugar levels right it wants to quickly get it down right so if you have fiber in your food right you have a lot of vegetables if you start your meal with a salad or just incorporate a good mix of vegetables in your food or unrefined you know whole grains or nuts and seeds and so on then it means that first of all you're gonna eat slower because you have to take time to chew right these foods right so you're not like scoffing down everything all at once right so the food is coming down more slowly right because of all that fiber it's more bulky and it takes time for the sugar to be absorbed right that's the one thing to decrease the glucose rise after a meal increase fiber eat more fiber right second thing is to eat more naturally fatty foods fat in your meals will also slow down the digestion and absorption of any sugar that might be in that meal, right? Now, when I say sugar too, I guess I, I should tell you specifically sugar in all forms, right? Now, starch is a sugar, but it's just in a more complex form, right? The more fiber in a starch, the more complex it is. The less fiber, it means it's more refined, right? Starch is a string of glucose molecules, and when it gets broken down, it goes, it is basically pure glucose, sugar in the bloodstream, right? So refined starch, pure sugar, like, you know, table sugar, whatever, right? If you're having not just pure sugar, pure starch, but you're having a meal that includes uh, fat, right? Whether it be fat from oil, olive oil, or butter, 
um, you know, more the healthy fats. If uh, it's like avocado, um, coconut oil, meat, you get fat from your meat. You know, meat has fatty bits in it as well, right? So if you're having a meal that has more fat, it means that you are having kind of more slow digestion and absorption into the bloodstream and so you have a more measured even like something like coffee like sometimes people a lot of times the popular thing is coffee with fat-free milk right or skim milk if you have coffee with skim milk you're going to have a higher increase in your blood sugar than if you had coffee with whole milk and that is a fact if you have coffee with whole milk right yes you might say oh i'm getting more calories but with because of the fat in the whole milk you're going to have a more slow release of the whatever sugar might you know from the milk sugars right or if what if you added sugar to your coffee it's going to be a much gradual much more gradual release of sugar into your bloodstream so you're not going to get that peak that you would get if you had it with skim milk right so include more naturally fatty foods when you're eating in all your meals all your meals should have fat i hope you know ideally like the main meals okay three drink less sweetened beverages sweetened beverages account for maybe up to 50 percent of sugar intake for most people it certainly was the case for me in fact sugar beverages sugary beverages probably took up more than 50 percent of my sugar intake because i never drank water so i only ever had juice i put loads of sugar in my tea and coffee and so on and so forth right so if you drastically cut down if not eliminated but let's just say cut down your sweetened sugar sweetened beverages that's going to drastically reduce the amount of sugar you're consuming and so definitely you're going to need less insulin because you're taking less sugar into your body okay so decrease drink less much less sugar sweetened beverages right number four never have dessert on an empty stomach whenever i go to a patient's room and i see that they're starting they have their tray the lunch tray served by the dietary people and they they're like starting with the pie i'm like no don't eat the pie first or they're starting with a pudding or something i'm like no right so the problem is that you are eating that sweet thing and there's no fiber your, your stomach isn't primed with anything it's not primed with any fiber there's no fat and so you have this highly concentrated sugar source going into your stomach there's nothing there and so it just gets rapidly absorbed into your bloodstream right and oftentimes two desserts are very refined it's like a you know a cake or like a pudding so it's really almost pure sugar maybe with a little cream um or whatever else but for the most part well, most desserts are almost pure sugar and so you're taking in pure sugar refined because it's nothing complex and so it's immediately absorbed straight into your bloodstream flush of sugar to the liver Ooh, insulin is triggers that oh my goodness this is too much let's store it because you cannot use all that sugar all at once and so it just gets stored right triggering that high amount of insulin release right all those things contribute to insulin resistance don't have the dessert on an empty stomach instead have your dessert as it was meant to be had after your meal dessert should be always after a meal which was hopefully well-rounded with protein and fat and you know starch with fiber right a lot of vegetables right if you do that you will have a much less significant increase in insulin if any at all right because you had all that fiber and fat that primed your stomach and so there's going to be a much slower release or absorption of um of the sugar from your dessert right fifth one eat more protein eat more protein again that's going to sort of slow down again you want your meals to be more rounded you don't want one-sided meals with just mainly starch starch is like an easy you know lazy source of energy but it doesn't give you all the nutrients you need to sustain your body right so have more protein think about protein too is that it's a more you know slow burning fuel so when you have protein fat is like that as well you have protein and you have fat and so um with those because they're more long lasting they take a longer time to digest and protein specifically actually utilizes more calories to be digested to be burned right so anyway these are more long lasting energy sources they take longer to digest longer to burn and so you can stay full for many hours after meals with protein and fat if you're staying full for several hours, it means you're not having to reach for a snack, 
usually snacks are going to be sugary sort of refined starchy snack bars or a, a sweetened drink or like a shake milkshake or whatever right having more protein and basically slower um burning energy sources fuel which is food right means that you stay full for longer these things decrease you know they, they suppress your hunger hormone more powerfully especially protein and so if you're not hungry you don't need to eat you don't need to grab a snack which is going to almost always be sweet and so you're not going to be pushing up your sugar and um by extension increasing your insulin levels right six do not eat within three hours of bedtime what happens if you eat within three like just before going to bed right you eat before going to bed um if especially the meal has a lot of starch again i'm picking on starch because it's like the biggest culprit especially if it's starch or nothing else now if it's nicely rounded with protein and fat and so on, okay maybe not so bad but just because commonly it's going to be starch it's going to be you know a sandwich or it's going to be some pasta or um, it's gonna be some cereal, right? In many cases, it's almost pure starch, sugar. And so you are going to bed with a glucose spike, which means that you're going to bed with an insulin spike. And whenever you have high insulin levels, you are in fat storage mode. Ideally, you want to give yourself three hours, they say. Sometimes for me, honestly, it's two hours, just depending how long I worked, right? but you don't want to go to bed right after you want to give about two, three hours for the food to, you know, digest, blood sugar levels to come back down. Of course, because you're up afterwards, you're not going straight to bed. You're kind of walking around, moving around and just kind of burning a little of that extra energy, glucose energy that you took in, right? If you go to sleep with the full stomach, then insulin is high, you're going to bed in fat storage mode, right? When you're in fat storage mode, as in when insulin is high, you can never be in fat burning mode like you can't be in fat storage and fat burning mode at the same time it's either one or the other when we're fasting that which is overnight i'm not talking necessarily like oh fast fast right but generally speaking going to bed and being in that fasting period is when the body has time to rejuvenate recuperate regenerate you know clean up detoxify and so on right but if you're going to be eating all throughout the waking hours just before bedtime especially if you're not even going to sleep for a long enough period because some people stay up for several hours you know there are different shows that you might binge watch and then while you're watching the show you're snacking on things that are still stimulating you know causing blood high blood sugar stimulating glucose uh, sorry insulin right so you're like in constant fat storage mode right you want to give that three hour break before you go to bed so that you can be in definitely getting into the fasting period and then your body during fasting can access whatever stores of fat you have to keep itself running to maintain whatever processes you know your brain your muscles whatever to keep you alive basically right but you want to use your fat stores for that so try not to eat within three hours of bedtime so you can be going to sleep in fat burning mode rather than fat storage mode okay and then the seventh one is to use your muscles more, right? So I said it in a diplomatic way. I could have said exercise more, but nobody wants to hear, oh, exercise more because exercising is boring and it's hard and nobody wants to exercise. Even I think exercise is kind of hard. Like I'd rather read, get up and read in the morning, read a book or I don't know, listen to a podcast. We usually just read rather than going to exercise. But I know the benefits of exercise so I make myself exercise. But I'm not telling you to exercise more. I'm just telling you, use your muscles more. So it can be as simple as just like doing stretches, you know, doing some up and downs. You could just like intermittently. And if you're really diligent, you can set your clock, your phone, I mean, to alert every one to two hours. And that's your reminder to get up, maybe do maybe 10 squats or um, some like table push-ups or just something like that. When I'm, all muscles are the one of the biggest users of glucose, of sugar, right? They're, we have a lot of muscle, right? Our brain too, but our muscles because bigger muscle mass relative to, you know, the entire body, right? So if we're using our muscles more, it means that we're using the all the you know more of the sugar that we're taking in and because it's being burned immediately because it's being used by the muscles immediately it does not need to be stored the reason why a lot of glucose sugar gets stored is because we're just not using it or we're eating too much 
um, or, or way more than we actually need at that point in time. And again, because sugar levels have to be normal, the body does not thrive on high blood sugar levels. So it does everything it can to keep that nice stable sugar level. And so even if you know, total calorie wise, you needed it. It's going to be stored if it's too much all at once because it cannot be too high. It's poison to the body if it's, the concentration is too high, right? And so if you do all these seven things, right, just to recap them again, eat more fiber, eat more naturally uh, fatty foods, like consume more fat, basically healthy fat with your meals, drink less sweetened beverages, never, never ever have dessert on an empty stomach, eat more protein, um, do not eat within three hours of bedtime, to bedtime and use your muscles more. If you do all those things together, they will help reduce or keep your blood sugar levels down. The longer you keep your blood sugar levels down, the more consistent you are with keeping your blood sugar levels down, the more, the less insulin you need, okay? Once the insulin concentration comes down and you're not bombarding your cells with all that insulin during every waking hour it means the cells of your body get a break from all this insulin right and so once they've gotten a long enough break and they realize oh my goodness like oh i'm not being bombarded they can wake up and then a little insulin comes knocking and you know because they weren't being bombarded they will respond to the little the little insulin that comes knocking and so the insulin starts working again and so that's how you your insulin resistance get reversed because now the insulin is working better and the more you keep up with maintaining you know decent sensible you know low or norm not low but normal blood sugar levels the more your body you know wakes up to the action of insulin it works and you just keep that going and bam you know less medicine less effects of insulin resistance of those high insulin levels over time again go and look at my other video about what are some of the um effects uh you know symptoms signs of insulin resistance right so those are all the things you can do together we're not gonna necessarily do all seven things all the time like every day right but you try and do most of them most of the time be consistent you can reverse or certainly improve insulin resistance anyone can improve insulin resistance right and many people can actually reverse it. It takes different months of time, but then you start feeling the benefits of that, right? So I hope you all found this video super helpful. There is hope. The last video a few weeks ago was not meant to scare anyone, okay? So just employ some of these and let me know how it goes for you. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, because after I, that, certainly that post on Instagram had over 100,000 views and a lot of reactions and so I know this is a common problem so if you found this video helpful definitely share it with somebody else who you think will benefit from doing any or all of these seven things okay and then you know like and subscribe to my channel click the notification bell so that you can be informed of when I post new videos have a good evening bye bye